I'd like to welcome you to this presentation in this series of work pre-application topical videos. Today's presentation will focus on some easy to miss components of the Work 6 FOA. I'm Molly Chamberlain from Chamberlain Dunn LLC, a consulting firm based out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Chamberlain Dunn has been working with DRA since round five of work. The DRA was established in 2000 as a formal framework for joint federal state collaboration to promote and encourage the economic development of the Lower Mississippi River and Alabama Black Belt regions. DRA's region encompasses 252 counties and parishes in parts of Alabama, Arkansas, Illinois, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, and Tennessee. These topical webinars are presented on behalf of DRA to assist applicants with their work applications. So just a few things on the basics. The FOA can be found at www.grants.gov. It is FOA ETA 2408. This round, there's a total of $49.2 million spread across the Appalachian Delta and Northern border regions with Department of Labor estimating up to 35 grants funded. Applicants may apply for a minimum award of $150,000 up to $1.5 million per project. Work does not require cost sharing or matching. The period of performance is up to 36 months, anticipated to begin on September 30th, 2024. The grant application is due no later than Thursday, June 20th, 2024 by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. The application must be submitted electronically through grants.gov. No hard copy mail or hand delivery will be accepted. And an organization may submit only one application. If multiple applications are submitted from the same organization, DOL will consider only the most recently received application that met the deadline. Round 6 FOA has three key focus areas, which are similar to but slightly different from Round 5's core principles. The TA videos on application components and project results talk a little bit more about the focus areas. You are required to connect your project description to each of these focus areas, as well as your project results, and then portions of the statement of need also relate to your ability to connect to good jobs principles, that's focus area one, and identification of historically marginalized individuals or communities to be prioritized, which is focus area two. In addition, the round six FOA requires applicants to address the pay good jobs principle by proposing strategies or activities that connect workers residing in the work region with training or employment opportunities in industry sectors that pay wages of at least $15 per hour. If an applicant proposes work-based training funded or reimbursed by grant funds, the applicant must ensure they connect participants to partner employers that pay at least $15 an hour for this training. Review page four for the definition, as well as strategies that could meet the pay good jobs component. Round six also puts a dollar and or budget percentage cap on strategic plans, stating that applicants may propose to expend no more than 50% of their grant award or $100,000, whichever is less on planning activities. In round five, there was only a dollar cap of $100,000. So see page 14 of the FOA for more explanation of this. Round six also puts a dollar and or budget percentage cap on capital expenditures, where in prior rounds, it was only a budget percentage cap. For round six, capital expenditures must not exceed 50% or $100,000 of a grant award, whichever is less on allowable equipment purchases and renovations. See page 15 of the FOA for more details on this. Finally, new to round six is the ability to provide incentives to participants, which are limited to 1.5% of grant funds for the provision of gift cards or other types of incentive payments to participants to compensate them for their time in providing information on grant outcomes, such as credential attainment or employment status, et cetera, after they complete their training program when these data are not otherwise easily available through administrative records for the purpose of accurately reporting performance outcomes. Grantees may not use grant funds to provide incentives for any other purposes and incentive payments must be tied to the goals of the grant. Moving on to attachments and naming conventions. Applicants must clearly label all attachments. See pages 28 through 30 of the FOA for more details. Only attachments listed in the FOA aren't counted against page limits. Applicants should not include any information that's not required or requested, such as resumes or general letters of support. 
you are asked to include letters from partners as well as key staff experience and job descriptions for key personnel. So you have to use your judgment on where to draw lines between those things. Applications must be submitted as a single package and application components must be saved as .doc, .docx, .xls, .xlsx, .rtf, or .pdf. DOL will attempt to open a document but will not take any additional measures if there are problems with file corruption or compatibility with other file types. Save all files with file names of 50 characters or fewer. Use only standard characters, capital A, capital Z, lowercase a to Z, zero to nine, and underscore. Do not use special characters such as ampersand, dash, asterisk, percent, slash, hashtag, etc., periods, blank spaces, or accent marks. File names must be unique and note that there are some attachments that ask for specific file names. We'll go through those in just a moment. You may use an underscore to separate words in a file name. So the abstract is a required attachment. It should include a project overview as well as a series of details outlined on pages 28 and 29 of the FOA. Requested attachments do not have their own direct points, but the omission of some of these could impact your overall scoring. So first, if you're requesting indirect costs based on a negotiated indirect cost rate agreement, you should attach it and label it NICRA. This attachment does not impact scoring. Next, there's a template for the financial system risk assessment and additional information for this on pages 40 to 43 of the FOA. This attachment also does not impact scoring. There are four required partners, two employers, one workforce partner, and one community-based organization partner. The FOA asks that, in addition to the information in your narrative, you include documentation of partnerships. Documentation may include signed letters of commitment, memoranda of understanding, a partnership agreement, or other forms of written commitment as part of the application. The letters must provide sufficient information to demonstrate that the partners understand and agree with their role, which should align with the roles described in the application. These letters must be labeled evidence of required partners. This attachment does impact scoring. Project timeline. This should include a brief summary of planned grant activities and associated milestones. The timeline must cover the entire period of performance, which may not exceed 36 months. The project timeline must align with activities referenced in the budget narrative and project narrative. This attachment impacts scoring. Key staff experience and job descriptions for all current or planned key personnel who may staff the project. These positions also must be included in the budget narrative. This attachment also impacts scoring. The application components video in this series includes more information about required and requested attachments, and the budget video talks more about indirect costs and information to include in your budget narrative. This detail is something you'll only have to worry about once you're awarded, but if you are new to DOL grants, it is important to be aware of reporting requirements because it does affect the amount of time someone will need to spend on grants management. There are three reports due quarterly and each has a specified format. So again, this will only affect you if you are awarded, but it's something that's good to think about as you're putting your application together. So the first required report is a quarterly financial report, Form ETA 9130, which is where you will report how much you've spent against your total in each category. The quarterly narrative report is ETA 9179, and most grantees expect to have to report this kind of information on things like progress, progress challenges, et cetera. The middle one here, the quarterly performance report, which you report through a DOL system called WIPS, this is where you will report on your individual participants and their employment outcomes. This is the one that can typically trip grantees up because you must maintain source documentation for each and every participant in accordance with federal re record retention policies. You'll be asked to report demographics, services, and outcomes. I recommend that you review the information on pages 48 to 50 of the FOA that provides details on reporting as well as links to tools and resources. So again, I mention this now, not because it necessarily affects your application, but because you will need the human capital to collect, maintain, and report on some pretty detailed information for all of your participants. Do be sure you're considering that from a budgeting standpoint and an organizational capacity standpoint.
Additional resources listed in the FOA are on pages 32 and 50 and 51 and include applicant FAQs and a tutorial called Grant Applications 101. Applicants can also sign up for updates through grants.gov on the website listed here. Other general questions about grants.gov can be addressed to support at grants.gov or the phone number listed here. Specific questions about this FOA, however, should be addressed to doletadwg at dol.gov. Don't forget to reference this FOA number, FOA ETA 2408, and include a contact name and phone number. There are also some resources related to national and state career information, industry competency models and career clusters, workforce GPS resources, and Skills Commons resources on page 51. Just a few final reminders before we conclude. Additional videos are available at the website you see here. Start the UEI, SAM.gov, and Grants.gov processes ASAP. Technical questions should be submitted to the email address here, reference this FOA number, and include a contact name and phone number. And submit your applications by Thursday, June 20th, 2024, 11.59 p.m. Eastern, and they can be submitted only through www.grants.gov. And that's it for me. I'm Molly Chamberlain. You can reach me at the email address shown here, mc at chamberlaindunn.com. Note that the end of Chamberlain is L-I-N, no A, and I would be glad to answer any questions that I am able to do. And I wish you the best of luck on your application.